Good evening, everyone. See the first question for the day. The first ever SARC disaster management exercise named SADMEX was recently hosted by India, whose theme was One SARC, One Response. Discuss the need for cooperation among SARC countries and for disaster, SARC countries for disaster risk reduction. How can India contribute to the same? So see the important terminologies, SADX, SADMIX, okay, hosted by India, whose theme was one SARC, one response. Discuss the need for cooperation, need for cooperation among SARC countries for disaster risk reduction. How can India contribute to the same? So there are two aspects of the question. One is the need for cooperation among SARC countries for disaster risk reduction. And what is the contribution of India in this particular exercise? So give me the outline or the framework for the question. Good. <clears throat> so obviously you need to write, you know, what is this need for cooperation among SAR countries? This is the first aspect of the question. And the second aspect of the question is, the India's contribution means how can India contribute is the question. It's not about already what India has contributed. So you can mention that in some part of your answer and then give steps for in what way or in how possible ways can India contribute for this particular disaster risk reduction in the SARC areas. So you can just give the basic introduction of SARC in your introduction. Like, you know, it's a South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation and uh, it is mainly for the South Asian countries. And then the recent SADMEX, which is a disaster management exercise, is a very welcoming step which can strengthen the SARC to further cooperate in multiple areas. Because we all know that SARC is presently not so active and it is dormant because of various issues, especially between the Pakistan and India. Okay, the both the neighbors are not in good terms with regard to maintaining their relationship. And hence SARC has becoming, SARC has become a little bit dormant in the present context. So you can say that by coming together with regard to the disaster management or climate change mitigation, there are many other things which are not directly politically related because a disaster, if it strikes in Pakistan, Afghanistan or India, it is not for anyone's wanting. No one wants that someone should get affected by floods or you know, earthquake in Pakistan or something like that. So politically, we are not in good terms. That is a different thing. But civilian wise, we don't have any kind of hatred towards the civilians of the Pakistan. And hence, these are the forums where we can actually coordinate better and come together so that the overall bonding of the SAR can grow. So you can just try to shorten and write it in your introduction. And now coming straight to the core demand of the question. Discuss the need for cooperation among SAR countries for disaster risk reduction. So what are the various reasons for having the need? One is because all of them are climatically or geographically located in the same Indian subcontinent region. That is the first thing. And then they are equally prone to the vagaries of monsoon. Be it regard to the floods, be it regard to the droughts, be it regard to the cyclones. All these nations of SARC are equally prone to the vagaries of monsoon. Okay. And then the growing climate change, the growing climate change is becoming a very big issue across the globe and Indian subcontinent. Basically, all these countries are once upon a time part of Indian subcontinent. And even today, they are generally referred to as Indian subcontinent. So this Indian subcontinent and its related countries are very vulnerable to the climate change and also disasters when they strike these countries most of these countries are either developing countries or underdeveloped countries please remember that they are not sophisticated countries who have very good extensive administrative or 
other capabilities to fight disasters most of these are uh, developing countries or sometimes underdeveloped countries and then most of these countries are agriculturally a, a agricultural economy oriented countries okay and any disaster like drought or flood is going to impact them very badly with regard to their economy okay and then most of these countries are in the vicinity of indian ocean and especially the bay of bengal and hence a disaster or a cyclone in bay of bengal is going to impact them very badly okay these are some of the reasons which are required for sar countries to come together to fight the disaster risk reduction okay because a disaster striking them is going to have significant risk so how can india contribute to this particular disaster risk reduction is the second part of the question so what already india has cooperated india has lot of experience in fighting the disasters okay so india has lot of experience in fighting disasters in the last class we have seen from 1999 till 2013 how far india has come in fighting the disasters okay so india can share its experience of fighting the disasters especially disasters like cyclones and droughts how india has been able to manage and india has a special force called ndrf under the ndma act 2005 and it can help other countries formulate such act where they can have exclusive forces or mechanism for fighting the disasters and india has been able to use technology successfully and integrate it with the disaster management so hence when india can use such technology in its fight towards the disaster it can encourage its fellow nations especially the neighbors through sarc to use similar technology in fighting the disasters and then india has an exclusive satellite system called irnss and it it can give access to the sarc nations for tracking and remote sensing the disasters so that they can use the prowess technological prowess of india and can successfully mitigate the disasters at their end and further india can also directly help neighbors during the disasters you can give the example of how india acted in the case of nepal when there was an earthquake india was the first country to send its air force and the disaster management personnel to address the situation in nepal and then india is a signatory of the sendai framework of 2015 to 2030 and it is very much clear as to how it can approach the disaster to that through the tmrr approach prevention mitigation response and recovery approach and india has already almost mastered this particular approach in most of its disasters and it can help with the sark disaster management in the conclusion you can mention india being the most prominent country in the sark uni union or the association has to take the lead to bring together various countries especially in fighting the disaster because any disaster striking the sark countries is going to impact the entire sark region so the need of the r is to sharing the expertise and the technological prowess india has got and thereby fighting the disasters collectively clear yes So, this question, um, I have to see.
Who's question I want? I wanted to see. Who's question I have now seen in the last class? Jitendra. Yes, sir. Okay, good introduction. Maybe you can even write, you know, what is the need for this exercise also? Okay. Yes, sir. I can do it. Yeah, you can add those value addition points. But make sure your introduction is only this much. Okay, it should not cross these four or five lines. So, as far as introduction and coming to the core demand of the question, you are right on the point. You have come to the core demand of the question immediately. That is good. And then you have mentioned climate change. Yes. Okay, post disaster. Okay, multiplied. Okay, cyclones. And you have to write that all these are on the same geographical region. Uh, I forgot it. I mentioned it. Where you mentioned it? Forgot it. I, I have to mention it. Ah, uh, you have to mention it because they are all coming under the most of them are in the same geographical region, right? Capacity building, yes. India's contribution, past experience, very good. Encourage PMRR, yes. Provide the disaster, okay. During cyclones, promote capacity building. And India is a signatory to Sendai. You can write about the satellite system we have. All these are very important. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, operations in Maldives. And you, then you can mention the disaster relief in Nepal where India has been leading from the front. Yes, Overall good answer, Jitender. It's a very good answer, above average answer. Okay? Right. Yes, I, hope you have, I hope you have written it without seeing anything. Yes, sir. Okay, then I can term it as a very good answer. Fine. See the 25th question. Environmental degradation has acted as a catalyst in increase, increasing these variety of disaster events. Illustrate, also suggest measures to their mitigation. So basically it is talking about environmental degradation and the climate change. Okay, just see the question and give the framework. Yeah, good. Everyone has given framework in a proper way. So, <clears throat> Environmental degradation has acted as a catalyst in increasing the variety of the disaster events. Illustrate. Illustrate means you have to give by examples. You have to give examples whenever the tag illustrate is coming. This is a very important tag. Illustrate means you have to demonstrate with examples. Suggest measures for their mitigation. So I think it's a fairly easy question. Let me be very honest. Almost everyone will be able to attempt it. And my mantra for this particular question has always been, wherever the questions are easy, try to focus on the presentation. So when what many people do is when they, they miss this term called illustrate, they simply give the reasons for environmental degradation. So of course, there are you will get marks, but when you give examples for these kind of questions or case studies because of uh, for these kind of questions, you will have more marks. And the measure should be very proactive, very implementable, and if possible, whatever the government has already taken, you have to mention those measures. The moment you are trying to think in this way, your maximization towards the marks will increase. Otherwise, you will write a very normal answer and come out thinking that you have done really well, but you will be getting only two or three marks because you, as far as the examiner is concerned, your answer will be below average. Okay, so now come here. First tell me, the environmental degradation has acted as a catalyst in increasing the variety of disaster events. Illustrate. So what is the first part? You have to give the environmental degradation as the reason for disaster and events. And you have to give examples. 
So what are the various examples you can think of? First, you can start off with the Uttarakhand example where extensive construction of dams has actually not allowed the free flow of the water into its natural basin. And thereby, when there was a cloud burst, the particular area could not take the so much of water. And finally, it got very severe. The first example you can give is the Uttarakhand example. Then what you can give? You can talk about the urban floods. Urban floods are a very classic example of environmental degradation. Why? You are blocking the natural drainage system for the reservoirs. Take for the example of Hyderabad, Usman Sagar and Himaj Sagar. The area is extremely developed now. The natural drainage system towards these two reservoirs is now choked. And as a result, the adjacent colonies are now in the flood situation for even smallest of rains. And the same is the case with Chennai and Mumbai, urban floods. Then what is the thing? Droughts. Droughts, you can again say, growing very water consuming crops like sugar cane and cereal crops in drought and the dry areas like Vidarbha and Marathwala regions of Maharashtra. Instead of growing millets, they are growing sugar cane obviously because of the commercial regions, reasons. And hence, this is a man-made environmental degradation causing the drought. And then how all these events are resulting in climate change because we are the ones who are going to clear the forest, forest the deforestation in the name of projects bypassing the agencies like National Green Tribunal and going on constructing dams and irrigation projects by clearing the forest, thereby resulting in less rainfall, less precipitation, high temperatures and abnormal climatic events, which is called as climate change. What are the other disasters like earthquake? going and constructing very huge monuments or buildings in seismic activity impacted zones. So this is causing damage to the system and thereby resulting in the earthquakes. So flash floods, Uttarakhand example, you can give the example of urban floods, Hyderabad, earthquakes, seismic zones, okay, and then landslides by extensively occupying the, you know, the natural hills in the name of tourism. You can give the example of Himachal or the north, northeast region where the rat mining is done in Meghalaya. So this is what the examiner is expecting when he says illustrate. Now come to the measures for their mitigation. What are the measures for the mitigation? Obviously, what are the issues we are creating? Counter action is the measures. One is afforestation, improving the forest cover of India to at least 33%, trying to address the degradation of land, promoting cultivation of millets in the dry land, growing crops like jetropha, or jojoba in dry land areas, which can have commercial value to the farmers. And then having strict implementation of the judgments of agencies like NGT, National Green Tribunal, balancing by constructing natural dams or check dams instead of huge multi-purpose dams. Not disturbing the ecologically fragile areas or ecologically sensitive zones. Implementation of Kasturi Rangan Committee report with regard to the Western Ghats. Not allowing the blocking of natural drainage for the reservoirs in the urban areas. 
and thereby removing the illegal constructions in the catchment areas, promoting ecological tourism, banning plastics in the tourist places. All these measures go a long way in promoting the environmental friendly attitude of the man and thereby addressing the devil of climate change and also reducing the impact of disasters. And the sustainable development goal you can mention and inform the examiner that the sustainable development is the way forward and we should all thrive to get the sustainable development get going. So that will be your model answer. Clear? Excuse me, sir. Whose Excuse question me. I have not done in the last thing? Excuse me, sir. Yes? Sir, uh, in this type of generalized questions, uh, how many points uh, we should write for, uh, for example, measures for mitigation? If we think of, we'll get so many, but how many are sufficient? See, it depends on the marks given for the question. Okay. Who is it speaking? Prasad? Yes, sir. Prasad. Okay. So it depends on the marks, firstly. If it's a 10 marker, okay. So, and then you see that this particular, uh, where is this? Yeah. This particular question. This particular question. It's having two parts. One is the illustrate, one is the measures, right? So if it's a 10 marker question, you can give five points there and five points here. Generally, these kind of questions will be asked for 10 markers only because there is not much, much means there is no significant analytical thing required here. Even if it is coming for 250 words or the 15 marks, then the number of points will increase. Okay. And the measures, you can give some government schemes or the government measures like NGT, the pollution control boards. Okay. You can say that they have to be active and they have to be given certain powers. So you'll just expand the scope of the answer. Here, maybe five or five points for each will be doing and then a proper way forward and a very positive oriented way forward. Okay, Prasad. Okay, sir. Clear. Thank you. Yeah, good. You have also given certain. Yeah, zoonotic diseases also you can definitely write. It's a most trending thing. Yes. Implementation. Anil agreed. Strict implementation of EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment, before sanctioning any project. Right. So, coming here, whose answer sheet I have to evaluate? In last class, who, who, whose answers I have not evaluated? I think Prasad is done, Rajni is done. Today, who has written? Renu, Renu, Renuka, you have written. Okay. Uh, slightly, you know, this is a 150 word question. So the introduction is slightly stretched. We can straight away come to the core demand of the question, Renuka. Mm, one words, never preferred or never the re, okay. All these you have to write and expand more. Okay, though it's a 150 word question, the examiner is expecting, as I told you, illustrate. You please see, you have even underlined this part illustrate then where are the examples renuka you are in the class no sir you you have not given the examples for all these you have to give examples and then measures taken measures to be taken 
hazard mapping, mm -hmm. flood plain mapping, reinforcement of tornadoes. We, do we have tornadoes in India? Is it in India or general question? Okay, it seems like a general question, but then since you are mentioning about Indian things. Okay, the points are relevant, Renuka, but you know, something much more is required for these questions, especially the details of with regard to your answers are wanted. Your points are should come in much more detailed way. Okay, and then wherever possible, give examples because that is what the examiner is asking you. Clear, ma? I think Renuka is not in the class. Okay, fine. Anyhow, so that was about our answer. See the last question of the day. Community-based disaster management, which seeks to empower community directly to enhance their indigenous coping mechanisms is a must. Elaborate. Good question. Take a couple of minutes. Yes, Rajni. Good framework. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, same. Same, Santa. Yeah. So, fairly again, a straightforward question. It's only, you know, but then sometimes what happens with these kind of questions is in examination, you will find suddenly that there is you know, some void in your content because these are some kind of unorthodox questions because in the previous question, you will find the challenge of excessive points. Here, the challenge will be not so sufficient points. Am I right? When you try to attempt this question, did you guys face similar kind of uh, hurdle? Yes, sir. Community based disaster demand is only one point we use in answer, but here we need to elaborate about that one point in a holistic answer. Yeah, see, there are only three or four points you can mention and expand. So, Rajni, you are saying no. So, what do you mean by no? So, you have you had fairly sufficient points apart from the traditional knowledge, you know, a local administration fighting with regard and having those points, you know, traditional knowledge, bringing them in, fighting the disaster, the community helping the local administration. What else points you, you wrote? Except for those sir, three, two, three points. Yeah. Sir, what I meant uh, by I didn't find any difficulty is uh, like after revising the last few questions of the uh, on the same topic, I didn't find it uh, challenging to write it, even though it was the same four or five points, but it was uh, enough for 150 words. Okay, that is fine. I'm saying in the examination point of view, because these are unorthodox questions. If you take the previous question of environmental degradation and then its impact on the disasters. I think, you know, everyone, everyone will write very good answers. And the challenge there is to how to make my answer more appealing to the examiner. In this, uh, in this particular questions is to write sufficient 150 words, which are relevant to the question. Okay, so coming to the question, Community-based disaster management, which seeks to empower community directly to enhance their indigenous coping mechanisms, is a must. Elaborate. So the examiner is saying that community has to be involved in disaster management. There is no second saying about it. And then he's saying, please see this term, elaborate. 
so basically he is trying you people he is asking you people to elaborate his statement what is whatever statement he has given that statement he wants you to elaborate and justify in this context you can mention what is community based disaster management basically community based disaster management is one where you are involving group of people along with their inputs and knowledge to fight the disasters okay how it seeks to empower the community so the first thing is to empower you can say how it is empowering how is it empowering basically it is using the knowledge of the people especially the traditional knowledge or the old age knowledge which the people are having to fight the particular disaster so basically when you talk to your grandparents or the previous generation people they have certain legends so most of them are derived from the practical experience as to how certain disasters can be fought they don't know the prevention part but they definitely know the response for disasters so by seeking those inputs from the community and community based knowledge you can definitely bring in lot of information into the disaster risk reduction or the disaster response and then here you can give examples like people of sentinels okay how sentinels survived the tsunami is a very big case study you can say sentinel community could survive tsunami which is a very big disaster because they must have had some traditional knowledge of fighting such a tsunami that is the first point second point is when community in, is involved at large the seriousness or the approach towards the disaster is holistic in nature holistic means the all the dimensions are covered it is not like one man is thinking and is going on implementing no everyone will come and give constructive solutions and then when the community is involved local administration finds it easy to engage with the disaster management because everyone will be in the state of cooperation no one will resist the local management taking certain actions and finally community based disaster management will extensively help in fighting the sendai fighting the disasters in relationship with the sendai framework of prevention mitigation response and recovery and also have a much better bottom top approach when compared to the traditional top bottom approach and it will help each and every region to have a customized approach towards fighting the disasters instead of one size fits all every region and every disaster is different a cyclone in orissa is different from cyclone in telangana because orissa is having a border line the sea is directly there and it is rising and the telangana cyclone or management is different so you cannot have a same approach for cyclone in telangana and orissa so one size fits all is not an approach for fighting every disaster by involving the community you are having a tailor made bottom top approach which the community can decide based on their discussions with the local administration and the center and the state at large can only be the facilitating mediums so these are the points you mention and then you can give innovative solutions like at each at each and every village level you can have a disaster response team who can coordinate with the local people and the local administration during the disasters and a team can be there to specifically promote knowledge and information about the disasters and create awareness among the people as to how to respond towards the disasters and they can also promote the spirit of preventing disasters in the next generation so all these are the important aspects in fighting the disasters as a community and then you can conclude by saying this is the best approach 
in view of the issue we have. Finally, that can be the conclusion. Clear? Yes, sir. Whose answer I have not done in the last two classes? In Prasad, I have done. Rajni, I have done. Jitendra, Renuka, Anil, I must have done. Vasavi or Soumya? Who have written this question? Vasavi has not written. Soumya, not written. Okay, so again, it boils down to you guys who have submitted the answers. Why is that other guys are not found? Suman, Sriram, busy people. <laughs> Ram is sick. Sumanth is not there. You have track of everyone, Jitender. I think next person who has track of most uh, issues after Ramana sir is only Jitender. Huh? No, sir. <laughs> there are so, people available here, right? Rajni and uh, Prasad, you have written? No, sir. Prasad has not written. So finally, Jitendra and yes, Rajni. Sir. Rajni, you have written? Yes, sir. Community based DM. Don't explain so much about community, man. Not required. And then, okay, you are saying group of people in disaster affected areas. You can just write that, you know, how community, you, maybe you can start from here. Okay. Yeah, you can say, you can start from here. Okay. Community-based disaster management can empower the community to cope with the disasters and can go a long way in minimizing the loss as the property. Okay. Up from here, you can start. Okay. Clear, Rajni? Yes, indigenous knowledge, good. Yes, Sentinels of Andaman, very good example. Nice. Yes, first line defense, training, awareness. Yes, having proper terrace in hills. Do's and don'ts, local power, local governance. Good. Good. Good answer, Rajni. You have made all the relevant points. Maybe you can just conclude as we have discussed. Okay. So that was about these three questions. Any doubts in these three questions? Any doubts you guys have in these three questions? Okay. Fine. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow. Hmm? Good night.